In today's video, not only will I be showing you how to do this beautiful acrylic pouring technique, but I'll also be showing you how to thin the acrylic paints for this technique and talking to you about interchangeable recipes. So stay tuned, that's next. Hello, my friend. Thank you so very much for joining me. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do a very simple acrylic pouring technique with a very simple recipe. Sometimes we get frightened off by ingredients and seeing people using them when we have no experience using them. But I'm going to show you there's nothing to be afraid of. This is very easy to do. And as long as you follow along with the products that I use, you too will be able to do this. So what I thought I would do today is first create the piece of art and then show how I made these paints, how I thinned them down, what I did to them. Talk to you a little bit about how recipes can be interchangeable. For example, how you can use this bloom recipe to do many other techniques and why that is. So for those that are looking to learn, make sure you stay till the end of this video. And for those of you that just want to see a nice piece of art, you're going to see that first. So I have some beautiful peacock themed colors here that I'm using today. And the names of those colors and how they were mixed will be coming up soon. I'm using one of these little spreaders that I had for a while and I'm using it to glide a little cell activator over those beautiful colors to create just a full swipe on a canvas. Now this is going to be a painting that once it dries I'm going to come back in and I'm going to end up adding some gold leaf into this, which I will show you. I may actually do silver on this one. I'm not sure yet. In the comments below, why don't you help me decide that? Do you think this palette would look better with silver or with gold flowing through it? But yeah, I'm going to create this swipe over the entire canvas, let it dry, and then I'm going to do that to it. And maybe something else, who knows? Fluid art can take you many places once it's dry. I want you to try to use your imagination and take it one step further. Don't just stop with the swipe. Try to add to it. You'll be happy that you did. So I'm laying down the colors, as I said, and going over them with my cell activator, which you will see all of this at the end of this video, how I mixed it, what I used, now you may be questioning, because this may happen to you, why is it on that first swipe I got all those little white pearl cells? Well, that's because on the first swipe, the color you will notice ran out halfway through the swipe. And then essentially what I was doing was swiping the cell activator over the white base paint. So that's what creates all those little white pearl cells. In person, this swipe is absolutely gorgeous. I'm using prism pour paints along with regular uh, golden fluid paints, and they are just phenomenal together. You'll see the sparkle here in a few minutes and uh, a close-up when I'm done. So let's talk about interchangeable recipes and what that means. That essentially means that you can do one technique using... 10 million recipes, <laughs> and that is very confusing for people. But here's what I want you to try to remember. Each recipe out there for acrylic pouring provides a different look. It provides different effects within the paint itself. Now, what I mean by that is if I go and do a swipe with a glue and water recipe, I'm going to get patterns of lines of color like a swipe would look like, but there would be no lacing and cells like your typical swipe painting looks like. 
if I go do that same s swipe with a American Floetrol and acrylic paint recipe, I'm going to get some nice lacing and cells throughout the painting. If I use this recipe right here that I'm using to do a swipe, as you can see, I'm going to get that tight knitted cell and lacing look. So each recipe, although it has its own ingredients, can be used for other techniques besides the original technique it was designed for. Well, I shouldn't say designed, but what poor artists typically use for that one technique. So we will talk about that in a minute, but first I wanna show you this. So first, let me address this. <laughs> Listen, I, look at this. This is from me wiping the palette knife off on my work surface. Look at what it created. Is that not beautiful or what? I'm going to save that skin. We'll be doing something with that. I may even make some skins with what's on the table here. Just swipe some cell activator over them. It's just, I love that look, really. Um, it's truly something else. And even look at the palette knife, the back of the palette knife, how pretty that is. So you need to envision this dry with some beautiful streaks of gold leaf going through it because that's what I'm going to do with it once it dries. But you can see how beautiful this recipe works. And like I say... All the time, just have some fun, explore with it, you know, test, do experiments, all of that. Now, what you're not seeing right now until it gets like into daylight and there's some resin on it is this. All of this beautiful sparkle from the prison pour paints. Again, that one is deep amethyst, and I used the peacock one. Well, they're really pretty, really, really pretty. It's nice to have a balance of those and regular acrylic paints. You know, just not shiny. Look at that, look at that. I love it, and I hope you did too. So, if you're somebody that wants some help, Stay to the end of this video. I have coming up next exactly how I mix these paints for you. And if you want that help, it is there for you. If not, I thank you for joining me. And until the next time, my friend, happy pouring. Okay, so for those of you that stayed for this part, I want to thank you. It's very important for me to show the new viewers and maybe people that may be confused how to actually thin down these acrylic paints to do something like you just saw me do. However, I do want to say that this recipe I'm about to teach you can be used for numerous things. I've used it to do the Dutch pour. I've used it to do flip cups and ring pours and dirty pours and swipes. This recipe for the swipe technique is, in my opinion, the best. Uh, so it's not only for what you saw me do. And in fact, a lot of the acrylic pour recipes that you see out there are interchangeable. So the reason why people use different products to do the same technique is because they're looking for a certain type of effect. So I'll give you an example, the Dutch pour. You can do the Dutch pour with paint and water. You can do the Dutch pour with uh, your paints being thinned down with glue water. You can do it with American Floetrol. You can do it with American Floetrol and pouring medium. You can do it with just pouring medium. There's so many ways to do the Dutch pour. However, if you use something like this recipe to do the Dutch pour, you're going to get a total different look as far as cells and lacing than you would if you use just American Floetrol. You're going to get a total different look if you thin your acrylic paints down with pouring medium and do a Dutch pour than you would with a Dutch pour that's been thinned down with American Floetrol and water. So 
It's the look you're going for. If you're a person that does not like cells and lacing, then you want to use something like a pouring medium. What I'm going to mix together here today is my homemade version of a pouring medium. It's not a, a real store-bought pouring medium like a Liquitex pouring medium, okay? But anyway, as I was saying, this recipe that you're going to see me using today can be used in a ton of techniques. You just have to experiment and you just have to figure out what kind of look do you like. You know, the best thing to do is watch YouTube videos and go to that description to see what that artist made if you ended up liking their painting. Hopefully, they're telling you either in their video or somewhere in the description the products that they're using. So for what I did today, I used what is called a classic bloom recipe, okay? What that consists of is three components. You have the first paint you put on the canvas to pour your colors on top of. Then you have the products that you mix together to thin your acrylic paints down with, or if you're using pigments, your pigments. And then you have the cell activator that you use, that you mix the Australian Floetrol into one color, and you use that as a way to create cells and lacing in your painting. So the reason why this technique is different from all other ones is with the other techniques, we're adding our, our products into our paints. We're either pouring them or blowing them, and there's cells and lacing popping up all over the place, right? Depending on the recipe you use. With this recipe, if you take this away and you don't have any type of a cell activator, you just have your colors mixed with this and you pour them on top of this, you're not gonna get any type of lacing and cells. Once you make your cell activator with this, you then are able to determine where you want your cells and lacing to pop up. For example, if we do a big painting of a square and I want cells and lacing in the upper left corner, I would take some of my cell activator that I made with this, I would put it in that corner and I would either swipe it out or blow it out with my mouth or a blow dryer and I would get cells and lacing just in that one area. All right, so that's how this recipe is different from all others. You can control where the lacing and cells pop up in your painting, whereas with other acrylic pour recipes, you cannot. They're just gonna pop up where they want. So let me show you how I mixed the paints for today's video. First of all, the first paint you saw me put on the canvas, the white paint, that was this right here. I get it at Walmart. Now I heard they're discontinuing it Whatever they replaced it with, I'm going to say 99% would work as long as it's an interior semi-gloss color. doesn't matter. I use antique white. It's still very white. Uh, you can get black. They got different colors, okay? These are the two important things. Interior semi-gloss, all right? So that's what you saw me put on the canvas first. Now, that I did not do anything to. I literally poured it out of the can into a big container to make my life a little easier. These uh, containers I saved from food. So I just poured some of this into here. And then from here, it went right onto the canvas. I didn't add water or anything. All right, so that's the easy one. The colors that you saw me use... I will show you those now. I had DecoArt 24 karat gold. I had a soft body muted turquoise by Liquitex. Turquoise blue from Amsterdam. Thalo green blue shade from Golden. Dioxazine purple from Golden. And then I had two prison pour paints from Color Art. Deep Amethyst and Peacock, all right? For my paints, and this would be the same for pigments too if you're using them, I made a pouring medium, and I'm gonna show you how I did this. These are the two products that I, I used to make that. Joe Sonia Gloss Varnish, 
And then this right here, again, it's an interior semi-gloss, a base C, Ovation Plus by Sherwin-Williams. Now, they only sell this in Lowe's. However, if you have a Home Depot and you don't have a Lowe's, Glidden sells a brand that you can replace for this. And this is it right here. Again, it's an interior semi-gloss base three. So if you don't have a Lowe's and can't get this, you can use this from Home Depot. So to thin my paints, I first made a pouring medium out of these two products. Now in this container here is this, just again for easier lifting. So I don't have to open that big thing every time, okay? So here is how you can mix with exact measurements, but I will also show you how I do it because, you know, I've been doing it a long time. So I will fill up whatever size container I'm making three quarters of the way and then fill it up with this and then fill it up another quarter of the way with this. I kind of just eyeball it. But for those that like exact, for every one cup of this, I put in a quarter cup of this. All right. So where are my cups? They're there. So every one cup of the untinted base will get a quarter cup of the varnish added to it. Should have my gloves on. All right, so I'll fill this up till it gets to a cup and a quarter. That's it. So you mix those two together. This is what you're going to use to thin down your acrylic paints, plus a little bit of water if you need it. It depends on the color. So we'll mix those two ingredients together. We will take some of our paint color that we want to mix up about that much that is the muted turquoise we will take some of our pouring medium we just made and we're going to fill it up about half of the way obviously if you use a bigger cup you have to use more paint and more pouring medium we're going to mix that together and then what's going to happen is I'm going to put this to the side, not add any water yet. I'm going to mix up all of my colors just like this. And the reason for that is, is that I am using different types of paints for my colors. And they all have different types of body to them. This is much thinner than this is. So this will take less water than this will. So the easiest way to do this is to mix them all up first, and then I'll show you how to judge whether or not you need to add water to them or not. So off camera, I will go ahead and add, uh, sorry, mix up all of my colors just with that pouring medium that I made. No water yet. Before I continue on, Remember I told you when I was making my homemade pouring medium that I don't usually measure, but I used the cup for you guys. So I'm going to show you now how I make my pouring medium without measuring. Again, whatever size container you may be using, it doesn't matter if you only want to make a small cup worth of paint or you want to make a whole batch of this stuff so that you have it on stock to mix at your leisure, which by the way, this will last six months to a year if you keep it in an airtight container. These soup containers I get from the Chinese restaurant, they work wonderfully. I reuse a lot of uh, things that come into this house, you know, orange juice containers, things like that, because they are airtight. So I fill whatever size container up that I'm using three quarters of the way. And then I come in with my varnish and I fill it up almost to the top. I got to leave a little bit of room for mixing 
right? So we'll get it almost up to the top and that will be your pouring medium for your colors. That simple. Don't stress over it too much. As long as you use the right products, the amount of those products, it doesn't need to be an exact science, okay? So now, that is my pouring medium that I'll put away for the future. But that's how simple this can be. As long as you get those products that I'm using, you know, kind of try to stick with what I'm using, this video will be your best friend. So moving on, how much water do we have to add? Well, here's the thing. Since the house paint does not have any water or anything added to it, we are going to use this as our guide for our other paints, for our colors. Because you want all of your colors to be the same consistency and also you want your cell activator to be the same consistency to avoid cracking, we are going to use this as our guide. This is going to tell us how these paints should be, okay? So, for example, here's the purple, the uh, Deep Amethyst Prism Pour that I mixed up. It's a little bit thicker than this, all right? A little bit thicker. The flow is going a little bit slower on it. And you can just feel that it's thicker than this here. This is more light and fluffy. So we'll go ahead and add a little bit of water to this color. And we will keep adding water until it feels like this white paint. Until it looks like this white paint. Now, there is something called a consistency guide. I have a video that shows you how to use this guide. I have a link in that video that allows you to print out this guide for free. And what it does, you'll have to watch the video because I can't go over all that in this video. It shows you what numbers on a chart that the paint consistency should be for all acrylic pouring techniques. So if you watch that video, it will make sense. If you struggle with consistency, that will be a big help for you. And something like this recipe, the Bloom recipe, should be between a one and a two, okay? On that consistency chart. Again, if it sounds like Greek to you, just go watch that video. It'll be a big help if you're struggling. So now, this is perfect. I'm looking at the stream rolling off. I'm looking at it on the surface. When it hits the surface, how fast does it disappear? And it's behaving exactly like this. So I know this paint is good, okay? So what I do is I go through all of my paint colors and I do the same exact thing. I test them against this white paint. Most times, they need a little tiny bit of water, and uh, they're good. So now that I've thinned down all my colors to match my white paint, now it's time to make my cell activator, and that, too, has to match my white paint and consistency. So for that, I have Australian Floetrol. I will not use anything but this for this one technique. Um... It To me, it works the best. I know people say that they add a large amount of American flow trial and it behaves the same, but I've seen those paintings and the lacing pattern is definitely not the same as with this, okay? So I know it's expensive. I only use it for this and I only use small amounts of it and it lasts me a long time, this jug, Okay. There's a discount for this, by the way, if you need it in the description. So to make our cell activator, very simple. In my opinion, the brands Amsterdam and Golden provide the best cell activators. Now, there may be other ones out there I haven't tried. For me, those are the only two brands I will use for a cell activator. And you can pretty much use any color you want. There are a few that may give you a problem and not react as good, but most of them really react great with this product here. 
and that's why I use those two brands. So I'm going to make just a small amount with you because I have a big bucket of this. I don't need to make it. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. What I'll do is put some paint in the cup. There is no measured amount. It's going to make however much it's going to make. And then if you need more, you can make more. But like I said, I make a big container of it and then I don't have to worry about it. All right, so we put some paint in there and then we're going to add this in until it's the same consistency as our white paint and our colors. At first, I'll start off with just a little bit to make sure my paint doesn't clump. Also, you can tell that your cell activator is going to be good when you look at the side of the cup and you see lacing forming on it. You see that right there? Right there? Like when I go to scrape it, you can see the little lacing happening. And that's how you can sell, tell your cell activator is good. So if that's happening in the cup and it's not happening on your canvas, you done did something wrong, my friend, in your paints. Or with your paints, I should say. So we're getting close here. Put a little bit more. You don't want to go buck wild because it's very easy to go overboard. And then it's too thin. Then it's a pain in the butt. You got to add more paint and you got to add it slowly or else it'll clump. It's just avoidable, you know. Just add in a little bit at a time. Perfect. So now... That is flowing the same exact way all of my other paints are. That will allow the paints to all dry evenly and not crack. If your paints are cracking, it means that your consistency is off. Some are thinner than others. And therefore, the thinner ones are drying at a different rate of speed than the thicker ones. And while those thicker ones are drying slower, the faster drying colors are splitting open those thicker colors as they dry, and that's why they crack like that. So just be aware of that if you're having issues with cracking. If you're getting white spots everywhere in your painting, that's an air bubble issue. You know, you got to just torch a little bit better and try to avoid that from happening. So now that I've shown you all of this, we are done with this video, my friends. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it educational. If you look under the description, again, there will be a lot of information there for you along with that consistency chart. And if you look on my channel at the playlists, there is that Back to Basics playlist that has so many beginner type acrylic pouring paintings uh, videos. Sorry, <laughs> I'm rattling off there. And um, it shows you, you know, how to use a pouring medium. There's all different kinds of, of videos there. So check that out. Connecticut and Char Charlotte, North Carolina, next week I will be there. I can't believe it. If you're in the area there or you can hop on a flight quick, come paint with Canella and myself next week. The information for that is in the description. And also, I want to say Connecticut, because Connecticut, I'm looking to have a class in March. So if you're in the Northeast and want to learn how to paint pour with me, it's an all-day class, shoot me an email, artbytammy at yahoo.com. I love you all. Thank you so very much for joining me. And until the next time, happy pouring.